Welcome to Time Capsule, where we explore the meaning of life in the 21st century through the eyes of people just like you and me. I'm Jerenz. And I'm Monica. And today we have educator Cara Lambrento. Welcome, Cara. Hello. Thanks for having me today. We're glad to have you. So can you tell us a little more about yourself and what you do? Sure. So I call myself an educator. And to me, that means that I work in education, but outside of the traditional classroom setting. So I have a background in biology, but I've decided to take it to a more educational route. But I've, but my experience is more with um, museums and teaching in museums as well as informal settings. So I hope, so while I'm still um, establishing myself as an informal science educator, I hope to do more work that involves teaching the public about, um, about the cool things that go on with the sciences. Wow, that's amazing. Um, what museums have you worked at? So I've worked at the New York Hall of Science as well as the Intrepid Museum. I would like to work at more museums in the future, but COVID-19 has them all not really closed down, but they're operating at a limited capacity. So right now, um, they're not necessarily looking for new people to add onto their teams, but overall, it's still a field that I really that I that I still really love to work in. Although I'm not restricting myself to museums, but it's something that I still love. I see. So, what inspired you to be an educator? Ooh. So, in my undergraduate studies, as a as a biology major, I am well. Overall, I'm an academic overachiever I tend to work very hard to like get good grades but at the expense of my own um, opportunities to branch out into other fields while I still had the status as an undergraduate student so um, at some point I found an opportunity to um, to two different to do two different roles one of which was an educator at the New York College of Science and the other was a research assistant in which I volunteered to help out a professor's research project. And I found that between the two, I liked educating at the museum a lot more um, because I found that I liked talking to different people about the exhibits and the activities we had and finding ways to explain different concepts. Well, more so finding ways to explain perhaps the same concept to different kinds of people and I also enjoyed the creativity that I, that I had at the museum in creating not only arts and crafts to lead people through, um, through a project, but also, to, um, but also to collaborate and help develop new activities and content for the museum. So I found that I enjoy that more than, be, more than being at the lab bench and um, and doing experiments, which is still important, but it's not, but it's something that I realized is, is not what I want to do in the long run. So I wanted to, so I still wanted to keep my science background in mind, not only because I studied it, but also um, I wanted to, I, I wanted to branch out of my own, um, my own tendency to to restrict myself to grades and to um, and to classrooms and break out of that. So I wanted to pursue. I'd like to pursue science education in a way that doesn't um, that isn't restricted by traditional academia and and involves a lot more creativity and therefore engages more people um, about the sciences. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing because I know, like, especially in school, like, um, kids can get bogged down by, um, you know, the big vocabulary words or those overarching concepts. And so, mm-hmm. finding ways to really engage and make it fun for not not just kids, really, for everyone, making science something that everyone can love is something especially important, something our society needs today. Yeah, really. Like, I know that. Well, the way that I've been taught science education, um, while there were definitely teachers that made it more engaging and told and related their lessons to personal anecdotes and stories, there was also the overarching, um, well, there is the overarching goal of memorizing this and that in order to do well in your regions, your exams, your AP, mm-hmm. your APs. Like while that, I guess while that is important to getting into different schools, overall, it's not the, it's not effective. 
it's not the best way to teach to teach students like the real applications of science. So having so finding different ways to engage different kinds of people who may or may not excel in the traditional school setting about the sciences can help can not only um, get them to learn more about what's happening in our world, but also to empower them, uh, to um, motivate them and start and get them thinking, hey, even though I may even though I may not be good at memorizing things or I may not be good at producing answers the way they want to, it, the sciences are still something that I want to pursue and I'd like to contribute to this field. Cool. So Kara, if you were pursuing a different path, what would you be doing and why? I thought a lot of times in my undergrad that if I weren't a biology major, I'd probably go into literature or writing. So throughout my, so throughout my own education, I've, um, re I've written a lot of essays as many people have and I've gotten um, lots of professors and teachers to, to um, say good things about my writing. And I thought that, and I thought that maybe writing is something that I can, um, that I can incorporate into a career. So I've always, so I've always thought that if I weren't in the sciences, I could be like reading different books and writing, um, and writing not only my thoughts on those books and essays, but also producing content producing creative content on my own. To be honest, I also think that if I were to work hard on it and discipline myself enough, I could incorporate writing into my own, um, into my own career trajectory because um, I would like to create more in terms of educational content. And I think it would be really cool to um, make, to write not, to write possibly publications, but also articles, maybe some demonstration scripts, maybe even like documentary scripts. While that's like a long shot, I think that's also still something that's that's really cool to do. Definitely. So would you like make stories like Miss Frizzle kind of science? Oh, like books? from the Magic School Bus? Yeah, there we go. I guess that would be, I guess that would be possible. Yeah, that would be, re that would be really cute to do to, um, to make creative, to make like science Creative science related creative content like that. Yeah, that would be great. All right, so now we're at the part of the show we like to call past, present, and future. So we'd be exploring three different um, timelines of your life. So the first is um, how do you see yourself now and how does that compare to the person you were five years ago? So, hmm, I guess I'll take this. I guess I'll look at this question not only career wise, but also like, oh, like holistically. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm in a very okay position. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not where I want to be in terms of a career. And I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I want from a career. So um, right now I have a job at a school um, that in, I'm called support teacher. So I, get to sit in on different classrooms that have students in them. And those classrooms don't have, they don't have the teachers present because they are, because those teachers choose to be remote. So I am sitting in those classrooms acting as the uh, adult presence and troubleshooting any um, technical issues that come up during Zoom classes. And outside of classrooms, I'm just making sure that students are staying six feet apart. They are social distancing, they have their masks on. So I'm doing stuff like that. And while it does pay well, it's not really something that I find very engaging as a career. And so while and so while I am sorry, let me backtrack a bit. Uh, I also find that during this time, this weird pandemic time, I've had a lot of extra free time on my hands that I could be doing stuff with and finding and exploring other hobbies with. And to a limited extent, I've been doing that, but not to the point where I feel extremely fulfilled. And I do find, and I do find a little bit of guilt in that, in my own wasting of my own time. But at the same time, I think I have a lot to be grateful for. And there are ways that this could be a lot worse than it really is um so i think over so i think overall like 
I'm in a like on the scale of like being really successful and doing really poorly this year or compared to the past and like somewhere smack dab in the middle I feel like you shouldn't be so hard on yourself though Kara because you're very smart and like you still have a lot like a long life to live you know hopefully but yeah thank you yeah so like in five years you know what's gonna happen like what is gonna happen exactly what do you think is gonna happen (laughs) oh um that's still something that I'm trying to figure out um wait before sorry before I before I answer that I think I forgot to address where I was five years ago do you still want me to answer that yeah yeah okay so five years ago I would have been in college in my freshman slash sophomore year of college and during that time I was doing pretty well in classes um but I was also involved in like a Filipino org that I was in and I found the activities that I was doing through there really fun like really fun um I didn't involve myself in eboard or get too heavily involved in the operations of the organization but it was still a really fun pastime and I was also meeting new people not only through that org but also in my classes and through other people that my friends already knew so I find so I found the um so I was meeting new people and getting these new experiences um I was having fun but I also was still very much stuck in that mindset of got to get good grades, got to do well, have to spend like hours of my day um, studying and doing well in my exams. So I feel like back then I was, I wasn't as mature as I am now. And I was, and I still had a bit of growing to do in terms of breaking out of like this have this like strict mindset that I put myself under where do I see myself five years in the future I am still figuring that out to be honest um I I don't think I see myself in a school being a homeroom teacher or grading papers because because that's not necessarily where I want to be ideally I would like to see myself in maybe a museum or a research center doing some scientific outreach or um, education related work um, with these with these organizations, but that's still a very amorphous vision of mine. So I'm still figuring out how that would go. Um, I would also like to do something creative on the side too. So hopefully I'm doing more of that in the future, perhaps, perhaps some writing on the side. And outside of career, um while I do love my family to death I would also I find myself like still relying on them a lot and while that's not bad I would also like I I also do see myself um becoming more independent and um having a position where I'm where I'm more able to help them more than just like giving me everything that they have access to yeah what is so we're just wondering what your life philosophy is and how you like to live your life each day. Mm. So one of the basic tenets that I live by is that there's always something to be grateful for and to stay humble and grateful. So overall, um, I do. I would hope that I present myself as a very humble and gentle person and um, when it comes to experiencing different things, talking to different people, I try to be patient and I try to hear them out on, and I try to hear them out on how they're feeling, regardless of whether it's something that I can sympathize with or it's something that, um, or something that may be upsetting or that I don't agree with. Because I think that even from all these different conversations, while some of them are uncomfortable, there are things to be, but, there are lessons that can be learned from these conversations and from these experiences. And I've also found that being grateful for things um, also keeps you humble and also keep, and also keeps you um, grounded on what you have and what you want in the future. Because while it's very easy to get caught up in not having this, not having that, not achieving a certain Um, not achieving a certain goal in your career or in your personal life, um, recognizing what you already have and what, 
others may not have access to um, can be really can um, give you some perspective on where you are and make you realize that it that where you are may not be where you want to be ideally but it's really but it's still a really good position to be in so I find that being so I find that being grateful um, being grateful is important to staying happy and at the very least content with what you already have um, during times where you question what you what you are able to have and what you can't have in the moment. Yeah, that's great. And that's so true that being um, grateful is often like something people, it's something that often gets forgotten in the really busy and chaotic world that we live in today. And actually that perfectly leads into the next thing I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. which is what are you grateful for in your life? I am very grateful for, I'm gonna just touch upon a, a few things I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I'm grateful for my mother. Um, I'm grateful that she's still around and she's still helping me, even though I've moved out. But we're still, but we still are very close and we keep in contact a lot. Um, my family has gone through a lot of trauma this year, and it was very hard on her as well. But I am very thankful that she made it out okay, and that she's, and that she is healthy, and that she has a very supportive network around her to help to help her get back on her feet and i'm very grateful that she's so the strong and knowledgeable woman that she is and i'm just very and i'm very grateful that i've had her as like a mother figure throughout my life i'm also very grateful for the friends that i've been talking to throughout this pandemic i've like gotten to um, talk to not only people that I've been talking to, but also reconnect with some faces that I haven't seen probably in a few years or a few months and um, having them and like having them around to talk to them on Zoom calls, watch anime or play video games with them over online or even have the occasional social distance hangout that has really kept me sane throughout this whole pandemic and one other and another thing that i'm grateful for is the fact that i have a very comfortable lifestyle i have access to technology i have wi-fi that that enables me to talk to you guys right now and i also have access to food and water and heat and a lot of amenities that i think are really easy to take for granted and um reading the news about what's come out of this pandemic has highlighted the socioeconomic differences and the disparities that are that are between like people who have access to these amenities and people who don't and who may be subject to worse conditions and so i think and so like nowadays um i try nowadays it's really apparent to me that um i have a lot of blessings in my life and I'm really grateful for not only the people that I have, but also just the things that I have every day that keep me comfortable. Yeah, definitely. I feel like we really lose sight of like the little things in life, especially like for the technology that we have. And like some people do not have access to that technology, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, I'm also grateful to talk to you, Kara, because we haven't seen each other in a long time. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, just to hear your voice again and to like hear your story that you're going to share with the world. Mm. Yeah, um, if I may add on one more thing, um, I've noticed that like working as a support teacher at the school I'm at, um, you need Wi-Fi in order to attend all of your classes, regardless of whether you're in person or um, at home. And that got me thinking, what about students who don't have Wi-Fi or don't or have Wi-Fi, but they don't have environments to do classrooms in properly, or their areas have really poor reception, and or they may just not have the resources to the technology that they need to excel in those classes. And so I've been thinking a lot about students who are already losing so much out on a traditional educational experience, but but I've also been thinking about students who may just not be able to 
get the most out of their classes because of factors that they have no control over. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And it's like something that I've actually like thought about and seen in the news over and over. It's like, um, especially with things like, for example, like virtual learning, like you had said, it's like, there's Wi-Fi issues. Some kids can't afford having like a consistent laptop or maybe a way to connect to classes or get into their online classes. Yeah. Um, they might have like really bad reception in their area. They might not be able to finish things on time and it turns into a, turns into a mess. Yeah, or sometimes they live with like a multi -gen in a multi-generational household or they live in a single room apartment where they can't have like a quiet private environment to do their studies in. So those yeah. types of things also affect the quality of their education. Yeah, absolutely. So Kara, now we're on the part of our show which gives us our title. If you were to leave something in a time capsule for people to take up 100 years later, what would you put in there and why? So this is related to um, that whole great, that whole gratefulness train that I was on earlier. I think I would leave behind my great, my gratitude journal. So um, back in 2019, I started, I started, or rather I bought a gratitude journal that um, I can record things that I'm grateful for both every day and in life overall. And this journal also contains some tips and some scientific research behind the reason why we have gratitude journals around. And so having people a century from now dig it up, um, I think that would, I think it would be fun to see um, what people are grateful for in the future. Although I suspect that it's going to be more or less the same things have, that people are grateful for today. And maybe they were grateful for a century ago. Um, I also think that having, it might also, like, I guess it would also be nice to um, have people in the future look at it and, um, see, and see the different experiences I've had, but also the different things that, um, that, I'm, that I've been grateful for whether that was I talked to this friend today, or um, I have I I can drink water every day and I'm thankful for that, or I'm thankful for the great weather we've had today. Things like I wonder I'm just wondering like if that'll like bring some enjoyment to people. And I also think that have that like having something that people can learn from in terms of the tips on what on why staying humble and grateful is important and what kind of research supports that is also pretty informative to people. And I think that having something that um, whoever reads it later on can learn from would be pretty nice to have um, dug up later. That's great. Great. Is there, um, is there anything else you'd like to add to tell our viewers? Um, I guess, so although I call myself um, an educator, I'm still very much exploring my own interests, both within education and outside of it. So for all I know, like my, I might decide to change my title. And this pandemic time has everyone, myself included, trying out different hobbies. So um, I guess this is a lesson for myself to try to um, try to not be so afraid to try out new things and for whatever become and for whatever opportunities you come across that are like um that are uncomfortable or they might be things that you might be comfortable with just try them out and be grateful that you have access to them and the, have access to them in the first place got it well Kara, thanks so much for being a part of our time capsule and thank you to all our viewers for watching please make sure to like comment share and subscribe Tune in again next week to meet another amazing addition to our time capsule.